I'm Ola and you're watching Reads the Tea, my YouTube channel where I drink tea and read books and talk about them. So if you like tea and you like books, stick around and hopefully we'll have some fun. Cheers! Okay, I hope everyone's having a great new year. Um, I'm going to start this new year off by talking about this beautiful book. This is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, I'm assuming that most people have heard of Little Women, um, if not read it, or, you know, you've seen one of the many, um, movies. There's the 2019 one that just came out, directed by Greta Gerwig. There's the 1991 with, um, Christian Bale and Winona Ryder. Um, and I think there's another one with Katherine Hepburn, but... If you haven't seen any of those movies, or you haven't read this book, but maybe you've heard of it and you don't really know what it's about, here's a quick little summary without spoilers. Um, so this book was written in, 18, in the 1860s by Louisa May Alcott. It takes place in the 1860s, and it surrounds the March family. Um, so they are a family living in the 1860s, and it basically focuses on the March's four daughters. So you have Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. Um, and it basically follows them for, I think, about 10 years of their lives, and it kind of focuses in on each daughter and, you know, their relationships with each other, their relationships with, like, their neighbors and their associates and everything like that. Um, and it's a really good book. I give it four out of five stars just because some parts are, like, a little slow going. Um, but if you're looking to get into classics, this is definitely a good place to start. So I do recommend this book. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to say without spoilers. So if you haven't read this book or you haven't seen the movie, um, click one of the exit buttons somewhere on your screen. Um, and I'll just, I'll just wait for a second. Okay, so I'm hoping if you're still here, then you have read this book. Um, just a few things that I want to say before I start, because there are some reasons why this book just has, like, sentimental value to it, um, for me. One is that I read this in, like, a book club and I say book club because it's not really book club it was just me and two of my friends who really loved the movie we saw it together about a year ago um the newer one uh the Greta Gerwig one um but we all realized that we'd never read the book and we were all like oh what a fun activity to do in quarantine together so we all read this book well so far I'm the only one who's finished it but we read the book and it's really fun because we could just like text each other like what part we're on um and we'd all seen the movie so you don't have to worry about like giving each other spoilers um and it was fun to do that and then also like we'd be sending each other like tiktoks about little women um and it, that was a lot of fun it's just nice to have like those friends to talk about it with like while you're reading it so i really enjoyed that and the second thing is that this book is very special to me because it was published in 1947 and this is my mom's copy of the book and this is actually the copy that my grandfather read to my mom and her sisters when they were younger my mom has two sisters so you know there's three of them in total so it's just like the perfect book that my grandpa read to them so really cute and it's got like these nice little like illustrations in the middle um and yeah i think they bought it from the library because their library was having a sale so they bought it for like 25 cents but it's really cute it is falling apart um but it was just really nice to read this and then like this is a book about family just to know that like this is a story that was read by my family and now I'm reading it and it's you know it's just really lovely um so that was definitely some sentimental value that made me more appreciative of this book okay so now for the review section um again I give this four to five stars I I think it was really good I do think like as classics go it's one of my favorites to be fair, I haven't read that many classics, but that's okay. Um, but I do think it does get really slow in some parts. I think just, like, sometimes I find with, like, the older books and the older writing, like, they give a lot of description, which is good, but then you also get kind of, like, stuck on all the description parts. Um, and that definitely happened a few times here, so it kind of, like, switches between, like, chapters that are very, like, heavily, like, action um, and, like, characters talking to each other and then like some chapters are just like straight description so it kind of like fluctuates between like fast and slower parts um so this took me like a month to read which is pretty long for me I usually it doesn't take me that long to read the book the book is for me this copy is over 500 pages um but again it also has like pictures and stuff so I don't know oh like it's cute 
um, but I don't know how long, like, the normal editions would be, um, but yeah, I mean, 500 pages, like, isn't that bad, um, but it just, it did take me a little while to get through, so that's my only real criticism of it, is that it does get, like, slow in some parts, but otherwise it's really, it's just, again, it's such a lovely, like, little story, and the thing that I really loved about it is that I think, or what's also so incredible is that this was written in the 1860s, and all the characters, like, their relationships with each other, um, and just the things that they do and say are still so applicable to humanity today. Like, you know, over a hundred and, uh, let me do math, about 160 years later, everything's still pretty applicable. Like, I can see, I don't have sisters, but I have two brothers, and I can kind of see the dynamics between my own siblings and myself in the marches. Like, I think that I would be, like, an Amy, I think my older brother would be a Joe, and I think my younger brother would be more of, like, a Beth. Um, but it's just so interesting to see that, you know, people haven't changed a whole lot in 160 years. Um, so that was really, that's, I just, I love that about reading, like, old books, how you can still kind of see that no matter, like, how far we come, like, people's basic humanity is the same. I don't know if that makes sense, but just being able to see, like, I like, oh, I loved in the movie too, they touch on this, but like, when Joe is talking about how she doesn't love Lori, but she just like wants someone to love her because she's so lonely. And I feel like that's such like a human aspect of life. And like, I know there's a song by um, Lovely the Band called um, Loneliness for Love. And it's like that feeling of like, mistaking like thinking that you're in love but really it's just because you want someone because you're lonely and I love that that's still a concept today and that that was like a concept when this was written so I just think that that's really cool especially like when you're reading older books to see how they still relate to today um but yeah so I really loved like the sibling dynamics I love that you also like it takes place over a long period of time so you really get to see like the character development because I think a lot of people hate Amy um, which I don't think is fair because like people are like, oh, she burned Joe's book. Like, yeah, she was like 11 or 12 when she did that. And then by the end of the book, she's like in her 20s. So, you know, she changes. Um, oh, it still kills me that Joe and Lori don't end up together. Um, also just because I think like the age difference with Mr. Bayer, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but mis with Mr. Bayer and Joe like bothers me like a little bit. Um, cause I think he's supposed to be like in his 40s and Joe's like in her 20s. So I'm like, that's a bit of an age gap, but other than that, like, really cute, um, and I kind of like, oh, oh, I'm dropping the book, I kind of like, um, Amy and Lori together, like, if, if I hadn't wanted Lori to end up with Joe, like, it would have been Amy, because I love, like, at the end, how Amy is still able to, like, set him straight, but she's also, like, the type of wife that he is looking for, and he's the type of husband that she's looking for, whereas, like, Lori and Joe are just, they're great friends, but they're just not right for each other. And I, I feel like that's discussed more in the book than it is like in the movies. So I really did love that. Um, oh yeah, some of like, I do like that it's written by a woman because you can kind of see what was happening around that time. And I think that's also what's so cool about reading like the books that are come out in the like 1800s, like with Louise May Alcott, with Jane Austen, with the Bronte sisters. Um, cause I really feel like this was the first time that you're getting like a female perspective in books. So I really enjoyed that. There are some things that are still like kind of misogynistic, um, but like that would be considered misogynistic by today's standards. Um, I do think like Louisa May Alcott does start to try and like bend those gender stereotypes. Like she is Joe who really wants to like make a living for herself. And then you have Meg who like, I feel like at one part, like Marmee or Mrs. March, tells Meg like oh you know like it's the wife's responsibility is for the home um but then they do introduce the idea that like both parents should be taking care of the kids because it's like both of their kids which I feel like was a very new idea especially in the 1800s so cool stuff like that and it's also just cool to see like because <laughs> they're living without technology and they like you know like I loved um there's a chapter that's just dedicated to like Camp Lawrence which is when they just have like this wild party and they have like all these games that they play like outdoors um and like their party games are like <laughs> just them like going around like you have to start a story and then the next person has to keep it going and like that's what they did for entertainment so I find that like really entertaining to read too um 
oh and then you know Beth um Beth's death scene which I knew was going to happen because well one again I saw the movie and two I also saw that Friends episode where Joey um reads Little Women and Rachel like spoils the ending for him um so I knew that Beth was going to die but I for some reason thought that it was going to be a lot sadder in the book than it actually was like it's a very like calm kind of melancholy death scene like there's no first of all because Beth isn't dying suddenly like her family knows she's sick for a while and also because she is in like such pain that like her family not that they're happy that she died but they're happy that she's no longer in pain and then throughout the rest of the book there's kind of this feeling like oh like Beth's still with us like we can feel her presence like it's very nice like that um but yeah it was one of the calmer death scenes I've read maybe a little bit more realistic because there's no like there's no hope that she's going to get better like you only you know that she's only going to get worse and I feel like that's again more realistic to real life where like when you know that someone is going and like all you can do is just kind of watch them go and like you're still sad and like you're not you are sad that they died but you're happy that they're no longer in pain and then you're sad for yourself because you're missing them and you're lonely without them um, and I thought that was all really well done in this book. So, yeah, I recommend this. Um, again, just, like, the sibling relationships are really well done. Family, familial relationships, and then the relationships with, like, Lori and Mr. Bay are also really cute. Like, little lovely relationships. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I hope you will too. And I would definitely say read this with a group of friends. Um, and also, like, because me and my friends, after we all <laughs> finally finish the book, um, and once, you know, COVID is a little better, we're going to try and, like, get together and watch all the movies and, like, just discuss the differences between the book and the movies and then the movies with the different movies. Um, and then one of my friends lives in Massachusetts, so we're going to try and, like, go and visit all, like, the filming locations. I'm very excited for that. Um, but yeah, we are going to have to wait a little while just until COVID gets better or until we can get vaccinated. I'm so excited. I can't wait to be shot in the arm. Um, anyways, four out of five stars. Really recommend this. Especially recommend this if you like classics or if you want to read more classics. Like, this is a really great starting point. Um, if you liked Pride and Prejudice, Jane Eyre, um, it's less romance and more, again, about, like, relationships with friends and family, but still really good. Um, yeah a great read for your new year um and again just really cool to kind of compare it to the movies that have come out 10 out of 10, out of 10 recommend for your 2020 reads 2021 reads oh my god okay that's all um hopefully this will get better in editing but i don't like to edit so we'll see what happens okay um well that's all i hope you enjoyed this i have a more cohesive coherent um review on my blog so you can check that out if you're confused um so yeah cheers <laughs>